This is the last session of the conference, training and competing in a strength condition. As you know, the different water temperature, high temperature can affect profoundly the, the safety of the competition and also the, the performance of our athletes. In this section, we will speak about the training altitude. We will speak about the ITU, IOC, FINA research about the lower temperature. We will speak about the training in hot condition and uh, the new way to cooling the athletes before competing in hot condition. The first lecture is from Alvaro Rancé. Alvaro Rancé from Spain. He spent a lot of time as a coach in Alpine Ski. He practiced triathlon uh, since 1996, and now uh, he was a, he's a coach of a lot of uh, uh, champion long distance. He lives uh, near uh, Front Romeau, the National Training Center in Altitude of France. Please, Alvaro. Good afternoon to everyone. Um, I'm sorry for, our, for that moment. Um, first of all, I, I would like to thank the, the organizers for, for inviting me here. But also, I, I would like to help, I thank uh, the Altitude Center in, in Font Romeo for letting me the opportunity to be here presenting my study about altitude training. It's called Motivation and Methods for Altitude Training in, in Triathletes. And like you can see in, in this slide, there are really uh, big names from, from sports medicine and sports science, like Dr. Nicolas Terrados and Charles Janique Zenek and also Nicolas Burrell. Uh, Charles Janique Zenek was the person that thought that we will be interested to bring this study here to the Congress. Um, during the last few years, I, I had the opportunity to, to see a lot of uh, athletes and, and coaches during their uh, altitude training camps. And also I have the opportunity to, to talk with them and ask them questions. I know it's something that is uh, difficult sometimes. Um, but I asked them questions uh, related to, to what we know from the altitude uh, training like how many days you are in, in the training camp, or uh, you are going to compete right after the training camp, you combine altitude, uh, questions that there are uh, always related to, to what mm, we have to do on, on those altitude training camps. Um, so uh, what, what is in, in, what I will do in, in this presentation is, to, uh, is divide it in two parts. The, the first one, uh, is going to be about those key points that we need to know that uh, the scientific literature um, give us to, to us to, to know uh, what we have to follow to, to do a correct athlete training camp. And the second part uh, will be this study that I have done during the last uh, two years. And uh, the principal idea is to know what really athletes and coaches do when they go to, to those altitude training camps and compare this data with what the scientific literature uh, tells us about it. So like, like all of you know, uh, uh, we start to get a lot of information uh, since the Olympics in Mexico. At the beginning, all the athletes and, and coaches, they use altitude training just to compete uh, at the same altitude. But then they, they realized that uh, it wasn't improving the performance uh, at sea level. But before we go to those altitude training camps, uh, we need to know that we, we're going to go through, through some steps. Uh, the first one uh, is uh, acclimatization to that altitude. Uh, and also, we're gonna, uh, we, we need to know that there are some uh, physiological effects that, that we need to understand. Uh, one of those is the decrease in, in the VO2 max uh, that you can see here in the slide. Uh, that the optimal max is going to decrease when we are uh, above 1,500 meters, and it's also is going to decrease 
uh, between two or three uh, percent every time we go uh, above three, 300 more meters. Uh, so it's something that is really important to, to know when we are uh, planning those uh, training camps in, in altitude. Uh, those ones that you see in the picture are the, the two training centers that we use for the study. It's uh, Front Romeo in France, uh, 1,850 meters. And the other one is in Spain, in Sierra Nevada, it's uh, 2,320 meters. Um, what also is important to know, uh, what we are really looking for when we go to, to those altitude training centers, um, what the, the, the principal idea or the objective of, the, of that training camp is to get those adaptations. Uh, we, we, we can talk about hematological and no-hematological adaptation, but the most important uh, thing in this slide is uh, how many days and how high we need to, to go to get those adaptations, and then use it at sea level. As you can see in here, uh, we need to stay between two or four weeks, and also uh, it's, uh, we need to stay between uh, 1,800 meters and 3,000 meters uh, to get those adaptations. Uh, if not, it's, it's uh, really difficult to, to, head, to, 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 take, uh, to have the whole adaptation and then use it at sea level. Also, there is uh, another um, uh, adaptation that we can say is a no hematological adaptation, and it's something that uh, Inigo Mujica talked uh, at the beginning of the Congress about strain training. And we can see here, it's very interesting that uh, there are really uh, new, new papers about it, that strength training in, in those altitude training camps is going to increase skeletal mass and, and capillarization, uh, something important for, for endurance and, and athletes and triathletes. And also this, uh, another paper from 2013 uh, that say that three weeks uh, of training uh, at 2,300 meters is going to uh, increase uh, lean body mass and decrease fat mass. So it's uh, another adaptation that, that is important to, to know. So now this is, we are following now the, those, those key points that the, the scientific uh, field give us to do a, a correct altitude training camp. Uh, but even we, if, if we go and do uh, those steps uh, perfect, we, we still have a, a problem, a little problem. This la the, that we're not going to be able to uh, train at the same velocity, at the same speed that, that we do at sea level when we are uh, at, the, at those training camps. So the scientific uh, field proposed to uh, to change that, the method that we're using, that is living high to, and train high, for living high and train low. That means that we, we have to stay uh, at the same altitude that we're talking, uh, 1,100 meters, 2,500 meters. So we, we are going to be able to get those adaptations. But then we have to go below 1,500 meters to try to keep uh, and train at the same uh, speed, at the same velocity that, that, we, that we do uh, at sea level. So it's uh, the method that uh, scientific literature proposed that it's the best way to do uh, during those altitude training camps. Here are the, those uh, methods proposed by, by the scientific field. Um, I'm not gonna go through which uh, one is, is the best one or, or the intermittent hypoxia. Uh, we have a question related in that study about that. Uh, but we still have a, a controversy about uh, altitude and training and altitude. Uh, because uh, when we take a look at about, about the, the effects on, on, on performance, uh, we still see that there is a, a real individual response no, that is uh, something important to know. Uh, so uh, to know which one is the response for those, um, those athletes, we need to add to those training camps 
uh, some kind of test uh, before, during, and after those training camps. If not, it's, it's really difficult to know which one is going to be this individual response and then uh, try to use this uh, altitude training camp on uh, a G level. Um, so we're going to go uh, through those uh, key points that, that I just talked. The first one, uh, we need to, to stay between uh, that altitude. Also, we need to, to stay a minimum of 15 days uh, at that altitude to get those adaptations. Uh, the first week for acclimatization, uh, uh, there are so many different uh, papers that oh, they say that uh, this is probably the, from the first week or you can go longer. But what that means is that you cannot uh, go um, and try to do the same intensity that you do at sea level uh, when you just arrive to, to the training camp. Uh, we need to know which one is the, the goal that we're looking for. We, we just want to trade some volume or, or you want to conserve intensity. You probably want to conserve intensity because you don't want to be four weeks in altitude and, and don't try to do that. So we, we have to, to change and do that uh, living high and train low. We have to add muscle strength training like we see in, in those papers. We need to do more than one training camp before a competition. And this is why, uh, if, because if we don't know the, the individual response that we get from, from that training camp, it's, it's really difficult to do a training camp and then try to compete right after. And we're going to see in the study if, this, if that happens or, or, or not. And also, this is something that mm, probably all coaches or like, like me, uh, we are looking for is which one is the best moment after a training camp to compete. And like you can see in here is, is uh, something that uh, remains uh, in document. Uh, we don't really know uh, which one is the, the best moment. There are a lot of the different theories. And this is the second part of the, the presentation. This is the, the, the study that, the, that we done. And, and the idea, the principal idea is to know what really athletes and, and coaches do when they go to, to those altitude training camps and compare this data with what the scientific field uh, tell us. How we done it is uh, we, we, we made a, a questionnaire. This questionnaire we, we, we give uh, to the athletes and coaches at the beginning of the, of the training camp. There are 24 questions. We could reach uh, 150 athletes. Uh, there are no just triathletes in, in this first part of the study. There are uh, uh, runners, swimmers, uh, pentathlon, and we also have uh, some, uh, some combat sports like uh, judo and, and boxing. But then uh, you're going to see the same study only with, with triathletes, so we can compare also. This is the questionnaire. It's, it's difficult to, to read it, but uh, all the questions here, they are related with those key points that the, the, the scientific literature tell us that they are important to follow like how many days we stay in altitude, um, if you combine altitude, if you do any strength training uh, during that training camp, uh, if you uh, do your just, uh, just train volume or train intensity and how much. Also, uh, if you use any day to get acclimatized to that training camp, uh, if you add any, any um, tests before, during, and after that training camp. And also, uh, an, uh, a qu uh, the last question, and this is uh, an important question for us, is uh, what they think uh, of the final uh, sensation of, the, of that training, if it's positive or, or not. Those are the results, but uh, you don't have to read it. I have uh, the summary, and also I have a, a graphic I think is, is better. 
we can see in here that in, in the first column, uh, living high and trade low, how many athletes uh, use it. Uh, we say that the scientific uh, literature proposes us to, 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 to use it like the best way when we are in, a, in an altitude training camp. And we can see in here that only 2% of those 150 athletes uh, use it. Then the second one is uh, how many athletes stay more than 15 days on those altitude training camps on Sierra Nevada or Fort Romeo. And we can see in here that's only uh, 53%. Uh, how many athletes use the, the, the first week to, to get acclimatized? Uh, it's only 25%. That means that 75% um, they can start, start training uh, at the same intensity that sea level. Also, uh, how many of, the, of those athletes uh, use uh, strength training during their training camp? It's 42%. Uh, here we have more results, but I, it's better if we take a look in the, in the graphic. Um, how many athletes do more than one training camp per year or do tra uh, at least three camps per year? Uh, 46%. How many athletes or coaches uh, do any kind of test? It's 53%. Uh, how many of those athletes compete right after the training camp? And you can see that uh, most of the athletes use those altitude training camp just to compete uh, right after. But we say that 50% uh, do any kind of test uh, during the training camp. How many of those athletes use any uh, Another method of hypoxia, like hypobaric chambers or, or something. And we can say here uh, that it's only 10%. And we believe that uh, in that question, we didn't have uh, all the, the right answers. Uh, because, uh, well, uh, we, we think there are more people that are using hypobaric chambers. But uh, and the most important one is um, how, what they think about the, the, this final training camp. And what, uh, so we, we get here that 80% they have a altitude training camp in a natural environment have a positive, yeah, positive impact. And we did the same with, with the, tri the triathletes that, that, we, that we could reach between Sierra Nevada and, and Fon Romeo. We only get uh, 44 triathletes, 25 uh, top athletes in 19 national level. Three from Sierra Nevada and 41 from uh, for Romeo. And here we're going to do the same with the graphic. Uh, how many triathletes uh, use the method living high and train low? It's 25%. Uh, Inside of this 25%, I, I can say, because I was the person that gave the, 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 the questionnaire to, to that uh, group, there is 50% that uh, when I asked why they are combined altitude, because uh, it was really interesting, uh, they were swimming where I live, this 20 minutes from, from Fon Romeo, it's a, a town in, in Spain, it's called Pucharda. And when I ask that, uh, they say because at uh, that moment uh, the swimming pool uh, at Fon Romeo was closed. So uh, it wasn't because uh, they wanted to, to combine that altitude. How many triathletes uh, stay more than 15 days in that uh, training camp? Uh, 36%. Also, how many triathletes uh, wait the first week uh, to get acclimatized? Uh, just uh, 36%. Strength training, 61% uh, of triathletes uh, use it. Uh, also, and it's interesting, is uh, only 5% uh, doing three counts per year. That means that 95% they're doing one or two training counts per year at altitude. But 50% uh, compete. Uh, right after that mm, uh, training camp. 5% uh, uh, use uh, 
another method of uh, hypoxia. And 86% uh, believe that altitude uh, training camp have a, a positive impact in, for them. So uh, here we have the, the conclusions of, of this study, what we think, and those conclusions we can, we, we, we say on, on triathletes, but this, we, we can use it for, for the 150 athletes in total. What we can see here is that according to the general recommendations that triathletes don't stay uh, sufficient days at altitude uh, to obtain uh, those adaptations that we talk at the beginning. We, we say that we need to stay between two or, or four weeks at that altitude to get those, those adaptations. Uh, we saw that there are, mm, uh, most of them, there are, they, they, they don't stay even a, a, a week and a half. Uh, also, the, the triathletes here doesn't use uh, any another method of hypoxia. The additive strength training seems insufficient. Use it during those training camps. Also, in the I'm sorry, in the first in the first one, uh, we can say that uh, they don't stay sufficient days, but and, and also they don't uh, they don't use the, the method of living living high and and trade low. And the feeling of the general population uh, is, is positive. So we can see here that um, most of the, the results there are the, the, those triathletes and those athletes that we, we study, they don't follow what the scientific uh, field uh, tell us about that is the best way to do an altitude training camp. But uh, they think it's, uh, it's positive for them. And uh, what, what we think is important is that maybe that uh, some athletes that get uh, very informed uh, before we, they go to, to those altitude training camps, so they know how many days they, they, they need to stay minimum to, to get those adaptations and, and that they can uh, train uh, different. They, they don't have to stay all the time and, uh, at those altitude uh, and they can combine the altitude and I'm sorry this slide is not well uh, well this is the the, the study that, that we done and I hope you you think uh, it's interesting to know what really the athletes do when when they go to, to those altitude training camps and thank you for your attention We have time for some question, if you want. Hi. Uh, I would like to ask you what kind of alternative uh, hypoxic methods you can also suggest for the trainings? Well, uh, I'm, I'm not... I'm not a specialist in, in altitude training. I'm, I, this study is about natural uh, environment, natural hypoxia training. So I, I cannot, in, in, in the slide there is, there is information about uh, intermittent, intermittent hypoxia, but um, I'm, I think I, I'm, I'm not uh, the, the right person to say which one is the best method because uh, it's still a, a lot of controversy about uh, natural training, uh, intermittent hypoxia, and, and all those things. That's why I say that w we think that we didn't get the, the, the real answer uh, about uh, hypoxia training when we asked in, 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 the, in the study. So I'm sorry. I'm Okay, uh, thank you for your presentation. Uh, I have one question regarding attitude training for uh, younger athletes. Uh, do you suggest uh, attitude training only for elite athletes or at which age is it the best for considering attitude training to the training program? Well, uh, well we uh, 
uh, study here, there are, you can see that there are, uh, I don't remember, I think 59, no, 45 from, there are top, ath top athletes and, and the rest, there are a uh, national level. Um, you ask me if, if it's important to do with uh, age groupers? Is no, no, uh, if under 23 triathletes or juniors. With juniors? Yeah, if it makes sense. Well, for, yeah, yeah, for me, I, I think it's important. Uh, what we've seen here is that most of the athletes, they just, uh, uh, we see that they just go one time uh, a year uh, to an altitude training camp. And I think if you start to go before, you, you, it's going to be easier later to, to get adapted to, to that altitude. Thank you.